guys welcome back to our channel today we're going to be talking to you about some of our favorite health and well-being books and also we're going to share with you some of our favorite podcasts so before we dive into the books and the podcast we just wanted to make a really quick announcement that we have just set up a private Facebook group called cultivate health and beauty community so if any of you guys want more contact with us or want to chat about these topics in like a private environment mm -hmm. and get our feedback go ahead and join that group this group will be a space where we'll talk about healthy lifestyle changes and well-being and all the different topics that we speak about on the blog and a place for women to support each other and guys if you want to join but there will be beauty topics and things discussed in there as well so head on over to Facebook and add yourself to the group or request access to the group it's called the cultivate health and beauty community yeah and so we'll link that below so you can go straight there and we look forward to seeing you there mm -hmm. so we have quite a few books here with us today yeah so we've split them up into informational diet and kind of self-help self-development sort of topics and we have quite a few here to go through our pile so is massive we will run through really quickly and leave all the details in the description yep. below and we'll extrapolate I guess a little on the books that we really like. highly highly recommend mm. but of course we recommend all these books if you're a reader definitely pick these up or get them on audiobook if you prefer yeah. to listen to your books because these take quite a bit of time to get through yeah we'll start with diet okay. so I think so this one you've probably all heard of before so it's the primal blueprint by mark sisson so this is great for anyone who wants to start a primal diet well he calls it primal because he includes dairy i believe but it gives you a kind of a good story and it tells it in a quite light-hearted way mm -hmm. easy to understand gives you the basic gist of what we're trying to do with paleo so we have the bulletproof diet this is by dave asprey if you've ever tried bulletproof coffee He's the creator of that line of products. So this book is really great. It talks you through obviously the information side of the diet as well as um, he puts you through um, a starter of his diet as well. So that's more of a high fat paleo type mm -hmm. approach with a lot of butter. Yes. <laughs> um, but that's a really interesting read. Um, he talks about even like protein fasting and different sleep hacks and things mm -hmm. so it's not just diet the next one that we have is gaps diet so gut and psychology syndrome so that was by dr natasha campbell mcbride and she's basically a neurologist who had an autistic son mm -hmm. and she then moved all of her focus and energy into understanding the gut and its role in like mental health mental disorder. health and other disorders that are linked to gut dysfunction mm. so it's not just about autism it's about um, eczema asthma allergies there's a really great book as well do you think if you're suffering from something that is mental mm. um, like depression and people want to just say it's only in your head and of course that kind of does play into it but mm. when you're looking at a more holistic approach you can start considering diet and this kind of bridges that for you mm. and for me personally with my eczema which was quite bad about a year ago i went onto the gaps diet it's quite strict it cuts out certain things like starches so even whole food starches so it's like a subset of the paleo style of eating but you're not mm. eating certain foods to help correct your dysbiosis of gut bacteria mm. So it's but not it just really cutting helps. them out, it's in a protocol, so they will be reintroduced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's different phases, so it's quite mm -hmm. strict, but I recommend looking into it if you're suffering with conditions like that and you want to try addressing the diet yeah. side and see if it helps. Then we have Chris Cress's Your Paleo Code. So this is another big name in the paleo community, and we love Chris Cresser. Mm -hmm. Listen to his podcast as well. So this book is great because it has a 30-day 30 30 day reset, mm -hmm. or 30-day... Uh, elimination diet to try and find out what your food sensitivities are so even when you're doing paleo even within paleo there's foods that you could be sensitive to mm -hmm. and it's kind of like you want to make it work yeah. for you as an and individual elimination diets really still considered the gold standard for mm -hmm. determining food sensitivities yeah um, so there are foods there that he um, doesn't necessarily say have to be out but he recommends that you test with yourself whether you're sensitive yeah. like things like even raw or unpasteurized dairy and he also has a lot of other kind of lifestyle things how to manage stress all the other important things that kind of make up a more mm. holistic view of your well-being and our final diet book that we recommend is the walls protocol 
So this is by Dr. Terry Walls. She, if you haven't heard about her, she's got a very interesting story. She was diagnosed with MS, which is an autoimmune disease, multiple sclerosis, which basically is um, the body attacking the myelin or the coating of your nerves. So you lose function, basically. Mm. She was in a wheelchair and she used um, diet and it's really a subset of paleo or within the paleo framework mm. um, to really optimize her nutrition and really understand what her body required and then provide that I guess yeah so she, so she yes. provides her protocol in here so it would probably be a very interesting read if you suffer with autoimmunity not even specifically MS and just want to learn more about her approach because she does run this protocol with a group like as a research study yeah. now as well so that is a good one Okay. Uh, now we're moving on to more informational. Yep, so informational books we have Death by Food Pyramid. <laughs> so it sounds a bit dramatic, but this book is by Denise Minger. Uh, she has a blog, you might have heard of it, and it is a little bit controversial. She did do some debunking of the China study. The China study, yeah. Debunking the China study, so please don't hate us in the comments. <laughs> but, um, or maybe go go your hardest, I don't know. <laughs> um, but basically, the first half of her book is talking about kind of the political landscape, what went into making the food pyramid in America. So kind of like the political interests and how different like agricultural associations and things had a role in putting together the food pyramid and why it emphasised grains and yes. things as a staple. Yes. So she kind of goes through that in the beginning, then she goes through how to look at a study and how to read a study, which I think is pretty handy, especially if you're into, you know, crawling through PubMed. It kind of tells you how to weed out the crap studies and how to find more gold standard stuff. Two here by Gary Torbs, so I'll go through them very quickly. What he's looking at in this book, this is the shorter book, so if you're looking for a lighter read, I'd recommend this one. This is Why We Get Fat. So it talks about basically the low fat, high carb diet and what it's done to our health. Yeah, it's quite an interesting read. He looks at like different tribes and things as well and like... I think there's pictures in that one or is it the other one? Yeah. Yeah. So this is really talking about like the quality of calories that different types of calories have. So on that vein, he has another book called Good Calories, Bad Calories and this is a much thicker read and it really dives into the science and studies so this is probably what I'd recommend if you're just after the headline information if you mm -hmm. want to dig deeper and understand the detail. Okay so our next book is The Vegetarian Myth by Lier Keith. So Lier was a former vegan for 20 years and then she developed what they call degenerative disc disease so mm -hmm. her spine started pretty much falling apart. So this book is all about her new views on vegetarianism, veganism. Mm. But go she she'd been a vegan as well because she was very passionate about the ethical side yeah. of vegetarian and veganism. And I think the interesting thing about this book is she changed away from that diet because of health reasons, but then <clears throat> really researched into whether or not mm. that diet and way of thinking really was having the ethical impact that she yeah. thought. So she actually breaks this whole book up into three parts. So it's moral vegetarians, political vegetarians and nutritional vegetarians. So she's talking about all those three different areas where, you know, often in the plant-based community we hear that it's nutritionally the best, ethically the best, politically mm. the best way to eat. And she's kind of addressing, addressing each of those yeah. and digging into whether or not that's true. Yeah. So we won't talk about too much right here, but if you want to read it, give it a read, let us know what you think. So, moving on real quick. <laughs> got so many to cover. We also recommend this book by Jonathan Baylor, it's called The Calorie Myth, and he really busts some of the big myths around calories, for example, calories in and calories out for weight loss. He talks about the quality of calories mattering more and how it's not like all calories are created equal. No, it's just that idea like we're a little computer system and you just yeah. put in the numbers and that, that's that how we work. just <laughs> calculates it like yeah. you just put in a cookie and it, mm. it's the same as putting in an apple of equal mm. calories. Like it has a it's profoundly different ridiculous. impact on yeah. how your body works. So mm. this is really interesting. He also covers off on exercise a fair bit in this book. So different efficient exercise strategies and techniques and 
things like that. So that's a very interesting book, especially if you're interested in weight loss and you've really been bound to this calorie way of thinking. Mm. It kind of frees you from that in a way. <laughs> We've got two more informational books, mm -hmm. so which one? Okay, so this is Vitamin K2 and the Calcium Paradox by Dr. Kate Room. You can, you, can, you can try and read that <laughs> last name, but um, I've heard her speak as well. And um, so basically what her book is about, it's quite a short book, quite dense little information packed one. So a lot of people believe that osteoporosis is caused by just a calcium deficiency. So in this book she's kind of talking about the role of other nutrients in developing strong bones. So mainly vitamin K2, but also all your fat soluble vitamins. So we've spoken a little bit about that kind of before in our other videos, talked about how important that is, but this is what you want to read to really understand that. And our last one is called Grain Brain by Dr. Perlmutter. This is an interesting read also. He puts a very compelling case together for avoiding processed carbohydrate and in particular grains and gluten-containing grains. His area of interest is of course the brain. He's I think a neurologist and his father suffers with Alzheimer's so he's really passionate about um, Alzheimer's prevention and understanding the role of diet in developing these conditions like he refers to Alzheimer's as diabetes of the brain <laughs> and um, no, they call it type 3 diabetes yeah he so he talks about um, blood sugar control and processed carbohydrates gluten it's kind of actually a bit scary when you, yeah. <laughs> when you read this book like if you're trying to go gluten free and you don't have enough impetus oh, like, yeah. read this book it's a motivation <laughs> ever again <laughs> nasty stuff so that one's a very interesting mm -hmm. read i think he also has another one now but i haven't read it yet on to something a bit lighter yes potentially so you can start with this one the nice okay so this read. is a light read this is mastering your mean girl by melissa ambrosini i'm actually reading this at the moment um, she does cover off on diet and lifestyle in this book but it's also a lot of self-development and i guess living in alignment with your true values and beliefs and going after your dreams and not being held back by feelings of fear or uncertainty. So it's a really good book, especially if you're trying to make changes in your life and you're holding on to, I guess, fear-based beliefs that you want to change. This is a really interesting book, plus it has like a lot of nice images in it compared to all these other books. All text. Yes. So our next two are ones that you've probably read before, you might have. So that is Eckhart Tolle's um, A New Earth and The Power of Now. So these are both kind of that new age way of thinking about creating more presence, more mindfulness in your life and overcoming, I guess what they term like suffering is like mm -hmm. kind of like the human Mental condition. Suffering, yeah. yeah. I, I think that they're really good read if you're interested in meditation, mindfulness mm -hmm. and I guess reducing your stress as well like because he really inspires you to work on being present in the moment and not worrying about the future or regretting or thinking about things in your past yeah. like it really freed me from yeah. a lot of thoughts that were not serving me yeah so i think it's a good read and then our last one one that i've just almost finished reading is breaking the habit of being yourself by dr joe dispenza so this one is kind of kind of in line with like that new age way of thinking but this one kind of adds a little bit more science into it so if you can't take the new age stuff at face value maybe this will be for you so even so it is talking a lot about quantum field quantum physics and he does believe a lot in meditation so it's about kind of changing your habits creating the life that you want by rewiring old subconscious beliefs that aren't serving you anymore. So he's doing that through mm -hmm. mostly through meditation. So specific meditations that he outlines in his book that you can download online. Yeah, so that's been a really interesting read and I would definitely recommend if you're into that kind of stuff. Now that we're done with books, we're going to do a rapid fire round of our favorite podcasts. Yeah, these are like podcasts that are considered like the top. Yeah, these are the top paleo healthy lifestyle podcasts out there so i guess first i will just put in the fat burning man i think mm. I, I always have a soft spot for fat burning man because that was my first introduction to mm. paleo or any kind of um healthy eating i think i listened to an interview with him and the writer of green brain totally changed my way of thinking yeah. and it can get really addictive from there 
Yeah, um, obviously we have to mention Chris Cress's podcast called Revolution Health Radio. Mm -hmm. And then we've got Dave Asprey's podcast, Bulletproof Radio. So they interview a lot of really interesting guests on their shows. Yeah. And we find them a reliable source of information. The other one that I really liked, he doesn't actually run his podcast anymore, Underground Wellness. Mm -hmm. So he's not running that podcast anymore, but there's still hundreds of interviews that you can listen to. And I think his style of interviewing was the best that I've really come across because mm -hmm. he was really passionate about interviewing skills yeah <laughs> so the way that he draws information out of people is really good mm. one other that i'd mention is called the crave cast and that's with alex jamieson so she probably branches a little bit more into like the women's health and overall well-being and lifestyle it's a little bit like less around just hard, hard science and, and things like that she talks about more soft topics and Kind of blends that in yeah she talks a, a fair bit about cravings and where they come from whether it's like emotional cravings or whether it's like bacterial imbalance that drives cravings for sweets and different things mm -hmm. so it's quite interesting especially if you're trying to kick any cravings that don't serve you whether it's diet or other things in your life that you're doing for reasons <laughs> yeah. that are either emotionally driven or other so she's very interesting to listen to. Oh, okay guys, so that was a lot of books to go through and a lot of resources. So we hope you find this video helpful. Let us know if you've read any of these books, or if you're planning to read any of them, mm -hmm. what you think of them. Um, we'll, leave all the links, we'll leave all the links in the description box as well. Yeah. So if you enjoyed this video, give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And until then, we'll see you in our next video. Bye, Bye guys. These are the Lululemon Align leggings or gym pants and I just love these for